Welcome to lesson 5. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to work with arrays, constants, enumerations, or what we call enums in Java. We're going to learn how to instantiate classes, and we're going to look at object instances in greater details. And as a practical program, we're going to create a program where you can track the performance of sports teams. When declaring an array, we specify the size. And note that in Java, once you've created an array, it's a fixed size. They are not dynamic. You can't change the, the number of elements in an array. There are two ways we can declare an array. Firstly, we can declare an array where we assign fixed values to it. This is how we do that. So we will say, the type, we want an array of int integers, int, type of int, and we want the name of the array to be prices. So this is how we declare a fixed array, and the values are separated by commas. It's not always practical to do this. So the second way to declare an array is where we declare the array as type int, like we did here. The name of the array is start time, but now here we say new int, and then there we give it the size, 10. Here's an array where we want to store the month names, so it's a string array, and we declare it as new string 12. To access the first element in the array, we use an index value of 0. So, if I want to store or if I want to retrieve, here is how we retrieve. So, int cost price, and I go to my prices array, and then I specify the index of zero. So, zero is the first element. And here is, in my, in, in my start times array, I may want to do it in order to assign values to the start time array, this is how we declared it, we will specify which element we want to, to store a value in. So the first element, we specify it as zero. So we say start times square brackets zero, and now we can assign it a value. So this is how we store into the array. And as I said, this is how we retrieve. Now, the second element in my array will have an index of 1. So here, selling prices equals prices square brackets 1. So I'm now retrieving 2, 1, 3. No, I'm now retrieving 3, 4, 5. Just be aware that if I have a 12-element array like here, that my last element will be one less than the size. So it should be square brackets 11. Month names, square bracket 11. This means that it will work very well with a for loop because we always start our for loop with a for i equals zero and we go to one less than size. So that will work very well to store or retrieve values to, a, to or from an array. And that is for a single dimension array. Now a two dimensional array will have two numbers inside the square brackets. And a three dimensional will have three and so on for a four element, etc., etc. Now we arrange the elements in the following way. The first number, we talk about rows. Rows are horizontal. And the next number, we talk, the first number, we talk about rows. Rows are horizontal. So we have three rows here. You can see that. And the second number, we talk about columns, a column index. So here you can see that there are three rows. But in these three rows, there are five columns. So we can also talk about the y value as rows and the x value as columns. So we can interchange between column and x 
Rho and Y. In Java, to be able to declare a variable that is a constant, we make the variable declared as a final. Notice final means that the value is, there's a value assigned to the variable and the value cannot be changed. So that is what a final is. For a variable, a final makes it a constant. And we have a naming convention for constants. We use uppercase for the names. Remember in Java, when we declare the variables and give them names, we like to give them long names, words. We want to use words. And then we separate the words with an underscore. So that produces uppercase words with underscore as the separator for the name. Here's an example, operation underscore failed. And this is a string, and then we are storing that message inside it. So wherever we want to have this message, we just call this constant variable, and we use it in our class. You will find that constants are declared as class variables. So they sit immediately under the declaration of the class. That is where we declare constants. They are the first variables that we declare. After that, we then have private variables. After that, we have the constructor of a class. And after that, we have the methods. That is the order. And we put the public methods on top and we put the private methods at the bottom. Now, an enum is a type of constant. If I have four or five constants that relate to the same theme, then instead of declaring five constants underneath the, um, the class, we can declare one enum, and that means that we save lines of code. So what we do with the enum is an enum can contain multiple constants, provided that the enum is of a certain theme. So here I have account types. I have a credit card. I have a current account. I have a home loan. I have a revolving credit account. And I have a vehicle financing account. So these are all, all these constants are related. They are all account types. So it makes sense to declare an enum. Now, when we create an enum, we give the file accounttypes.java. That's the name of the file. So it looks to me that an enum is a type of class. And under the, the, under the engine, you will find that what's common between enums and classes is that they have variables and they have methods. We will see that in, in this lesson. Now, there are two ways to use enums. If we look at the account types, remember when we declared it, we just had all the constants separated by commas. You see, all these constants. And that is how we declared the enum account types. So the one way to use an enum is I want to retrieve from that enum. So I will say account types dot current account. Now notice in Java, when we want to access variables or methods, we from a class where they are static, we use the class name with the uppercase for the first letter. So it's the same here. This is static. A, a, Account types, current account. Now look here, current account has a method, dot name. So that means that current account is a, is a Java object. Interesting. So this is actually, how do we create Java objects? We do that with classes. So uh, enum is a special kind of a class, but we don't call it a class, it's an enum. So the, the way we can retrieve it is we say account types, dot and then we choose one of them. So in this case, we chose current account and then dot name. And that will retrieve what 
the account type is and in fact when we do that we will get a, a, uppercase current underscore account and that will be a string remember this uh, method here will return a string you need to remember that and this way we can retrieve the account type and the second way that we can work with enums is if I create a method get account type and I put the enum as a parameter you see here account types as a parameter and then the variable will be account types so here I can pass it an account types and then I can then process that in the code so this is how we do it I've stored current account the name of the current account enum in there and then I can say my check account is an account type of current account and th this was the first way to work with enums now here is the second way to work with enums I've created a method called get account types and I'm passing it account types but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to return a string and it's a static method so I'm going to return account types dot name so whatever I pass to this the name I'm going to return so look here I am passing it account types dot vehicle finance and then here I print your account is an account of type and in this case I am passing it your account type which is going to use this method and it's going to get the name of the account and we know that it's going to get a vehicle finance let's continue let's go and look at this in the code now we have provided you with the source code but I would appreciate it if you do the exercise with me so create a class called play with enums the file name is play with enums.java copy this code into that but now we can't run this yet now create a enum called account types the file name is account types.java pause the video now now we want to compile so we compiled the account types and now we want to compile the play with enums clause and that compiled I want to make the screen a bit bigger So now let's run this. You may have noticed that play with enums had a main method. So this should run. And then let's go and look at the enum again or at the play with enums. So in the first case here, we said my check account is an account of current. And what we did here is we had said current account get name and we stored it in there. So we had retrieved from the enum the current account. Notice that it brought it back in uppercase and then the second 
case here let's look at the code so here we had that method get account types we had called get account types and we had passed it account types dot vehicle finance and then this returned a string and that is the string that we printed vehicle finance let's continue with the lesson up till now we have been instantiating classes without knowing what we were doing and we need to actually learn how to do that i am going to do an example of a calculator class you see if your class has static methods like i did with the play with enums if i have static methods in my in my class i don't need to instantiate the class to access those methods but if i don't have static methods in certain libraries they use static methods and in other libraries they don't make the method static so they expect you to in make an instance object of the class we are going to see how to do that now you will notice something interesting here i've got a class called calculator there are three add methods and they are all getting a x and a y parameter but the difference is the first one returns an int and it takes an int as a parameter int x and an int y and it returns an int so we talk about a method signature this is the method signature int out int in int in the next one is a add method as well but this one takes too long a, a long x and a long y and it returns a long so its signature is long out long in long in and the third method add this one takes two double parameters and returns a double so its method is i beg your pardon its its signature is double out double in double in and what we call this in java is method overloading and you will find in the java language that um, there are a lot of classes that have overloaded methods in fact if you look at plus plus is a method it's a special kind of primitive method and it's overloaded because this plus is adding ints this plus is adding longs and this plus is adding doubles this comes out of the c plus plus language so why we want to do that is because i want to create the instance of the calculator and i want to be able to do different types of calculations let's have a look at the next slide so before i can use the calculator class i need to make an object instance you may have heard me talk about the constructor now the constructor is a special method it has the name of the class you see calculator with a uppercase C, the method has a uppercase. This is the exception to the rule, because the rule in Java is all method names start with lowercase, except for the constructor methods. And Java recognizes when you give the method name the same name as the class with the uppercase, it recognizes that this is not a normal method, this is a constructor and it uses the constructor to make an instance object so what this line here will do is when we say new calculator and that calculator is the name of a class but it's also the constructor method java will make the code of the calculator class sit inside memory and it will create what we call an object instance and this will sit in what we call the permanent memory in Java. It's called the heap. And the heap is where we keep objects, object instances. So all the classes that we declare, if we need to call the methods and the methods are not static, this is the only way that we can do it. Now, this also a rule. You can have more than one constructor. 
This is what we call the default constructor. It has no parameters. But you may have seen when we used string that we said new string and then we passed it in the parameter. We passed it a text. So that is what we call a constructor. You see, it's not the default constructor because the default constructor has, a, has no parameters. But that is still a constructor and it's a constructor with parameters so just remember that and here's an example of that so we said string name is new string and you see we passed a parameter to the constructor the method has the same name as the class and it will do the same it will make an instance of this class and the name of the object will be called name in this case the name of this object will be called calculator and they will be stored in the heap me memory, not in the stack. The heap is the permanent memory in Java. The stack is the temporary memory. So declaring a string this way will also save the string in the heap memory, not the default of way of declaring strings would save it in the temporary memory known as the stack. So here we are going to use that calculator class. So here you can see we've instantiated the calculator and we've got an instance object called calculator and we declared some variables and then here we said calculator notice lowercase c so it's so you can see that the add method is not static so that is the reason why we have to instantiate this class so that we can access its public methods its non static public methods and we passed it two parameters and these were ints so because we gave it integer values it's going to do the calculation and store the result in an int. Let's go and look at this in the code. So please create a class called calculator. The file name is calculator.java. And don't cheat and use the source code. And these were the three methods that we learned about that were overloaded. Just pause the video now. Create this class. I assume you've done that. Save the file, exit. Let's compile it. And that compiled successfully. Now let's have a look at the let's have a look at the next class. So create a class called play with calculator. The file name will be playwithcalculator.java. Pause the video now. Right, save it and close the file. Now let's go and compile this. And it compiled. Now let's run this. And now let's have a look at the code. So in the first line, we said the number of variables is 5. That's what our result was. We took two, pota two tomatoes and three potatoes. We added that up. And what's important to me is not the result. It's that we used the add method, calculator.add, and we gave it ints, and we got back an int. That's what's important to, to me now. The next one, the number of potential customers. So here we put web page hits 
and YouTube subscribers. Notice that the one is bigger than the other. So if, if I add this two, that is the potential number of customers that I can get. To me, the important thing is I'm calling the same method add, but I'm not calling the add that returns an int. I'm calling the add that returns a long. And you can see it returned a long. And that was the number of potential customers. And then the last thing that's important to me is this one here now we took a price that was a double we added tax to it we did that in this method here so what's important to me is the calculator dot add that took doubles as parameters and that it was able to return a double and we will know that it returned a double because if we look in the amount to pay and we find there's a decimal point in there, then we know that it worked. We actually called that method. And if we look here in the result, it actually did return 31.05. So when it added these two, it came up as 5 and 5 is 10, carry 1. 8 and 2 is 10. So that was 3031. So that is correct. Let's continue with the lesson. So we have already seen how this works. Now we are going to create a project and the project is going to be a project called Rugby League. You are welcome to change the name of the project. You can make it Baseball League if you want or any sport that is of interest to you. Soccer League, uh, whatever sport football league, whatever sport is of interest to you. Remember, the code in this practical project will be your code. But that was the end of the theoretical part. And with all these lessons, we will deliver two videos. The first video will be the theoretical lesson. And in the second video, we will provide you with a practical application of the theory and you will notice that each lesson the project gets progressively more sophisticated or more complicated as we uh, delve deeper into the Java language. Thank you for watching the theoretical part. Now go ahead and have a look at the next video. Our plan is to Upload the theoretical videos on a Sunday or a Monday and during the week to upload the practical video. Until we have completed this course, our idea is not to give you a single lesson, but to give you little lessons where you learn a bit and you write code and you learn a bit and you write more code. And take our examples that we give you and try and create things that are more useful for you. So maybe you're not interested in tracking sport, but you might be interested in tracking comets or something in astronomy. You can use the code to do that. You can create whatever you like. We will be delighted if you actually use this code and come up with something interesting. And please give us a thumbs up subscribe to the channel so it can grow and also we look forward to you giving us a comment telling us that you used this code and you created a different project or you didn't like this and you improved it by doing that we will enjoy your comments thank you mm -hmm.